This is Martin Giles of the Guildford Dragon News, and today I'm with Robin Horsley, uh, who was so surprised and concerned when he heard about the North Street Regeneration Plan due to be considered by GBC on January the 11th, that he has decided to start a campaign. Robin, hello and welcome to the Guildford Dragon. Hi Martin, good afternoon, thanks very much. Okay, so what is the objective of, of this campaign you're starting? Well, in simple terms, it is full public engagement, full public engagement on the town <clears throat> on the town centre scheme, and and all the associated associated issues that sit around that. Uh, do you have a background in campaigning? Yeah, very much so. I'm a marketing guy. I got involved actively in politics eighteen years ago, and have been involved in lots and lots of national and local campaigns ever since. Okay, and. Um... <clears throat> Why have you only just become aware of the project? Um, GBC has issued press releases. It has been referred to in council meetings. There's been an exhibition. Developers have also displayed the model at public events. And it has been subject of numerous articles in, and opinion pieces in the Guildford Dragon. I don't mean to be rude, but shouldn't you be paying more attention? Um, you, you could certainly argue that it is the concept, it is the requirement of every voter to dedicate a certain amount of their day or week to actively going and finding information. You could, on the other side, say that it is the responsibility of a council um, to do what it says on, on, its, on its website, do what it says in its mission statement, or its, uh, uh, what it says to, to, to its constituents is that it says it will consult them. And I think, actually, that's the reality of the circumstance is that I don't know if I don't know if people are generally aware, but if you become a councillor on, on a borough council, you earn you earn for that job little more than one hundred pounds per week. So the number of people that can afford to put a lot of time into that are very very limited, and so therefore what they have to do, and and they really should have done this in the in the first instance was put in place uh, an instruction to uh, the council as a as an organisation that it must engage the public. We're talking about people from groups such as the residents for Guildford and Villages. They were elected as, as representatives of those people. But yet, as far as I can see, the public engagement, I mean, I haven't received anything. The reason I didn't hear about this until, I mean, I didn't hear about the North Street scheme until last week. I thought prior to that, <clears throat> uh, I first heard about the Debenhams Development Scheme um, on the 4th of December, by which time it had already been approved. That's that's my concern. OK, so what should the council have done that they haven't done, do you think, to make sure that everyone was aware of it? Well, there are about 150,000 people who live in the borough, and there are many more who come from outside to shop, to do business, for all kinds of different purposes, to use the, the amenities, the theatres, the cinemas, all that sort of thing. So they're all affected. And the, and the, the, the principle of democracy is that uh, any decisions that are made um, have to be made with the consultation of the people who they will affect. That's the basic cornerstone of local democracy. It's the basic cornerstone of every level of democracy, be it Westminster, be it county council level, borough council level, parish council level, or district city, or unitary authorities, which are what we've got around the country. So, sorry if that sounds technical, it's because it is. And that's part of the reason that people don't understand it, because they don't necessarily know if it's the borough. Is it the borough council that deal with the roads? No, it's, it's no, the county sorry, council. council. Yeah, is it the county council that deal with planning? No, it, it's the borough. In fact, that's right. a really big one. Okay. And, the, and the thing, Martin, is this, is this is a major development. The North Street development is a major development. It means turning an area which is low-level shops into high-level, multiple high-level blocks of flats. You know, and I've looked at the scheme. I would, I'd like to be able to tell you right now that I know the scheme inside out, but I don't. But the, the concerns that have been highlighted and the expert advice that I've had on it is that it is a very, very controversial scheme. And what is really controversial is the very idea that it might be, uh, well, there's a planning meeting on the 11th of January in just how many days' time is that? 12 days' time which it, it could be approved. Yet the, the evidence is virtually nobody knows about it. It's not just me. I mean, one, one county councillor said to me, I don't believe you. I don't believe you didn't know about this. 
No, I really didn't know anything about it. And the simple reason is that nothing appeared in my social media feed. Okay, all. so do you I've think got nothing you through the door, okay. no emails from anybody. So is this what you think the council should have done? Be more active on social media, perhaps done a mail shot to everyone. Is, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you if you're running a council and you've got 150,000 residents to to communicate with, obviously the adult ones certainly you can communicate with. Very small children you can't directly. Um, but you should be if you know if you're sending out council tax bill tax bills every year as they are if you're dealing with waste collection to every single home of the year the very least you can do is when you're sending out the bill is put in a notification okay it's saying to people that you voted for this council you need to take part in this if you're interested in any of the issues that will be affected you know parking access to the town the the nature of rebuilding the town i mean there are a whole host of issues the, and it's the historic county town of the county so it doesn't actually just affect the people in the borough but those councillors are definitely accountable to all of the electors in the borough okay now you've done some analysis i think of the comments that have been submitted by the public uh, against the planning application what have you found okay so i mean this is a major scheme One hundred fifty thousand people affected plus um this is the thing that stunned me when i looked on the council's website which is the portal that everybody has to use in order to uh, submit their commentary, um, either in support or against, or, or they can just submit comments as neutral comments if they wish to. There were only 50 objections to this scheme and only 58 support submissions. But, so they might, might, they might make you think that, that the majority is in support, but hang on, this is a tiny, tiny number. This indicates that the vast majority of people, even if they're aware of the scheme, are not engaged and don't understand the issues and how it will affect them and all that, that kind of stuff. I mean, awareness is one thing. Engagement is actually what you need. And that's why I said it's full public engagement on the town centre scheme. Okay, so, so you found that not only there are a small number of comments in relation to the size of the scheme, but mm -hmm. there you know there's not a big majority either way i mean it's it's, it's well, roughly evenly uh split okay well okay here's some more more numbers if of the supporting submissions only six of these are unique expressions from residents so what i mean by that is somebody sat down wrote an email gone onto the website wrote some text or sent a letter in only six Three are from businesses. I think there are, I think there are, two of those certainly are entertainment venues, so I can quite understand why they'd like a massively increased population. I mean, we're talking well over a thousand people just for that scheme, let alone all the other ones that are planned. Um, there are two people who I couldn't access, can't tell you what they think because some technical issue on the website, on the Guildford Borough Council website meant I can't see the comments. And 47 are block comments. Now, essentially what those are is just when people go and copy and paste so rather than sitting down and taking the time and trouble to express their individual concerns and express in their own words in their own way what are the things that they can that they're uh, supporting the system uh, supporting the proposal on sorry in this, this instance um they haven't done that it's just a copy and paste paste copy and paste which which makes you ask questions about how you weigh those i mean this is not unusual do you want me to go? Do you want me to carry on? Well, no, but I mean, I, I, I think we need to uh, come soon to the end of this, and and there will be a written article to complement the the interview, um, and, sure. and we'll go into more detail in the article there. But um, uh, so your 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 point is that these block comments should they be valued in the same way as individual comments? I think. Yeah, I think that's my what my, my big. My big point from all the research that I've done surrounding this is that there is virtually no engagement. In fact, what I'm being, what councillors are telling me is the engagement process is the is actually just the stuff that the developer has to do. So the developer has done, like you said, you know, they put out a, a couple of press releases. We all know that the local media, other than yourself, to be honest, Martin, is not very active. We all. I looked at the ABC circulation figures for the Surrey Advertiser, which was an institution when I was a child growing up in Guildford. Everybody bought it. I mean, not everybody, but you know what I mean. It was a huge, huge circulation. Only four thousand copies in the entire area of Surrey of one point two million residents buy a copy every week. 
4,000. That's one in 300 people. So yeah. if you send a press release out to the Surrey ad and expect, it, expect that to make much impact and you do a bit of, you know, it's the I've looked at the engagement. The, the, and, and, and that's a sales pitch largely from a developer. That is okay. not to be, to be fair to the Surrey ad, they do have an online, you know, presence Surrey Live as well. So, yeah, but, um, and that is where a lot of news is heading this way. Okay, well, that's good. So, but now an interesting fact in this is that although he doesn't share your surname, your father is uh, a residence for Guildford and Villages councillor for Shalford. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, and um, Chris Blow. Uh, mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, a party colleague of John Rigg, who's the main protagonist of this scheme. Uh, yeah. And your dad recently voted in favour of the Debenham scheme. So yeah. what does he think of this one? And what does he think um, of your campaign? Well, I think you'll have to ask him that. And I hope his answer uh, to your question about what he thinks of this development would be that he's keeping an open mind on it. And the simple reason is, is because he's on the planning committee. And therefore, it's his absolute responsibility. To do to do that, councillors can get in a ser serious trouble if they don't keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. um, that is exactly the point. I mean, uh, with a scheme this size, every single one of the councillors should be voting it on it, not just a tiny little group. Um, but that should be the answer. What does he think of my campaign? Well, he doesn't know about it, and he won't until he watches your video. Okay. Well, Robin, thank you very much for giving your time for this interview. I've invited you to write an opinion piece, so hopefully we'll be able to publish that soon. And um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes between now and the 11th. Thank you very Great much. Song. Thank you, Martin. Thanks.